Hi everyone, welcome to Outdoorbound TV. I'm Kurt Walbeck. On this week's show, pro staffer Lindsay Hayes gets the opportunity to come home. That's right, she's drawn a spring turkey tag in her home state of Wisconsin. So she's loading up and heading back to the family ranch where she's hoping to hang that tag on a big old Wisconsin long beard. Now, this hunt might be a little bit tough because Lindsay is also 22 weeks pregnant with twin boys. Now, her and her brother Michael are out well before daylight, so let's meet up with them at the Hayes Ranch.
that Tom worked towards that long end of the field, and yeah. he just wouldn't come back when we made the move, right? I know, we tried. And I fired him off. We, we got over here within probably, what do you think it was, 70 yards, but he's around the corner. Yeah. We couldn't get him there, so we tried to go back around and <laughs> run across the field. You know, it's a little bit harder with 20 pounds and two twin boys in the belly to run these days. I'll give her that this year. <laughs> but that's not the excuse. We still got to get it done for the boys. Uh, but, oh, man. And we could see him beautifully, like, fanned out and everything. Uh, kills but they're me. still got one, so yeah. there's more out there. So the hen spooked. We saw he actually called in, brought in a hen, and she saw us first, so she wins. We're we're down zero one. Let's go get another. <laughs> <laughs> well, I finally got it done in late season, and unfortunately, we didn't get this one on film. But all that matters is, is that the memory is forever ingrained in my mind. And what a beautiful bird. Look at this gorgeous fan, a nice paintbrush, about an inch and an eighth spurs. And my heart is still pounding out of my chest right now. 22 weeks pregnant with twin boys. I got to share this hunt with them, which was super special. But throughout this year, it just goes to show all the memories that could be made. We had so many laughs between my brother and I getting to go out together, my dad and I getting to go out together, and then this one, a solo hunt with the twin boys. They got to witness this nice harvest uh, in late season. I can't say enough about getting to come home to Wisconsin. Beautiful birds here and always a good time. Hey, Lindsay, congratulations on a great time. I think it's pretty cool that your two boys got to go on their very first hunt and they didn't even know it. Now, don't go away because right after the break, somehow Lindsay manages to talk her dad, Gary, out of a secret family recipe for canned venison. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Rapala and PK Lures. Well, unfortunately, the big one lives to see another year. And so no big buck uh, for me this year, but we had a lot of fun interactions in the woods. And we do still have some nice fresh venison and that's thanks to, we always do a little herd management and take off a few doe every year. And this is my dad, Gary. I love to hunt with him as well as, I love for him to teach me traditions that he learned from his mom and generations before him and one of those is canning venison so we get fresh venison year round so dad you are going to tell us this recipe that is top secret in the family it's pretty big that you're actually going to share it i appreciate that i got that from my mom she probably got it from her mom but they probably didn't have refrigerators or freezers back then when they started and they canned a lot of beef they canned venison and a lot of times Farmers lived off the venison most of the year because you sell a beer, kill a beef, you're missing your money. So yeah. venison, they could shoot the deer during season and have it year round and hot, quick meal. And it's a good lean meat, which I love. And I also think it's super fun to share this meal with people because I haven't met somebody who has had this that didn't want seconds or thirds. So I can't believe this is big news that he's actually sharing the recipe. I didn't even have to like twist his arm or anything. So thanks yeah. for that, Dad. My mom's probably not too happy. <laughs> now next step is you gotta get the onions cut. All the beef fat's rendered down because we use that after we get all the jars packed. Okay. So you start cutting the onions up, get the whole all cut up, I'll show you how I do that. I'm sure you've not done it before. But no goggles, Dad, so you don't cry. You can handle it. I gotta be a little bit older than that. <laughs> you know, normally those people at home, I think you're giving them a different side. You better restart here because here, Mr. Jokester, I, I don't think I've ever seen hey, you this, this serious. serious. Oh, this, this is a serious. Oh, this is serious. Because anybody who knows Gary uh, Hayes knows that Gary Hayes is serious zero days out of his lifetime. That would be the truth. Not when I'm canning It's all, all business. It's all business. Okay. I like to use yellow onions. 
And I just cut them up in chunks, don't matter. So you're not making them real small. This is about what they'll look like? Just so they fit in the jar. Okay. Nothing fancy. I just do whatever happens because I like to get it done. I don't like to be here all day. So. And do onions, I mean, I would feel like they add a little extra sweet Oops, flavor to it. That. And another thing you'll notice about my dad, he doesn't ever use like a measuring um, <laughs> anything. He just knows. And so he'll, if you ask him, it's like, how much of that? This, is, he just knows. So how many onions should you probably use? How many pounds are we making today? Five onions per seven jars. I okay. just, just make them. And when you see me on my process, how I fill the jars, you'll know how I do it. Okay. Okay, that's enough of those for right now because I know we just keep them for later. Okay. okay. We're done with the onions. So the next step is the seasoning for the venison, and this is a very important part. Dad, I know you don't like to measure anything, so he never uses these, but I am going to use these so everyone at home actually knows how much of each seasoning to put in if you want to do the recipe. So, first one, Dad, the canning salt. How much do we need? Well, this is my measuring stick. I use this <laughs> can. I've been using it for 30, 35 years. I always put my mixture in here for my beef or venison. Today it's venison. So basically, she wants to measure it. I'll try and do the best I can at showing her how I measure stuff. Okay. So I usually put some of this Morton cannon salt. You gotta use that. You can't use other salt. You gotta use cannon salt. And it's usually like half a cup, I guess. I'll see how close it is. So he likes to fill the bottom of this. I just fill the bottom of the eight pan, so it's like maybe just laying around like that. So it's laying there. Okay. Is that enough? Basically, they like it all spread out so they can do that. Then here's my next measuring stick is black pepper. Okay. That I just... So now he covers the entire layer of the salt with a layer of black pepper. And I'm trying to keep track of how many shakes that is. I'd say it's at least 35, 40. Easiest way is get an 8 by 8 pan and do what I'm doing and you don't have to worry about and if you're off a little bit, nobody's going to complain. It looks so, like about a tablespoon. Okay, table I got spoon. black on top of white. Now I use Lowry seasoning salt. Just cover the top of that lightly. That's done. Okay, that's and a I teaspoon. Use, teaspoon of Lowry. Then I use the celery salt. Same thing, a little thing over the top of that. That and looks like, like about a little 10 celery shakes. in there. Gives it a little more flavor. And then I use a little garlic. And I cover that all up like that. All right, now wait. Now garlic powder or garlic salt? I garlic don't know powder. Too much powder. salt is not good for you. Okay. I like the powder. Then you just stir it all around. And that's probably enough right there to do oh, probably 15, 14, 15 quarts. Because I, use, I don't use it in each piece of meat. Every fifth piece gets rolled in it and puts into my concoction when you put it in the jar. So I that's just an old way I've been taught to do it. So mix it up. You can probably buy it at your local convenience store. I don't know. <laughs> we'll put the I'll do a better job on the recipe online. I'll I'll make sure to actually write out how much of each one of those because this is truly how he does it. And he wonders why I've struggled through the years to try to just know exactly how to do the recipe. Well, it's not hard. You just cover everything with layer white and layer black and then layer yellow and layer yellow and then mix it all up and it's ready to rock. All right. It's okay. So the seasoning is good to go. We're done. Not quite. We got a lot more steps left. So next is what? Put the meat in the jar. Okay. Let's do it. Well, there's always good smells in the kitchen, but there's also some good sounds, at least one I like, is the crackling of the fat rendering down to the liquid form. So it's been in there for about a half an hour, and that'll be good enough for us to have about a half of inch of the liquid layer that we'll put on each one of the quart jars. And then also another thing to keep in mind is here's this good looking fresh venison. And with it, we're gonna need about 15 pounds of venison for seven quarts. And the reason we're gonna do seven quarts for this batch is because that's what fits inside the pressure cooker. All right, Dad, so you cube it into one inch by two inch chunks, and which part of the deer do you like to use for this? We like to keep the tenderloins for good steaks to eat. 
The rest of it, anything on the whole deer. You can put in, make ham, they would make for hamburger, sausage, whatever. I use everything. Okay. Any kind of meat. I try to keep as much fat off as possible. And we use the rest of the deer. All right, and so then the next step is seasoning this meat and getting it in the jars. Let's go. Yep, looks ready. So Grandma Eva's rule was that the mason jars need to be kept in a nice warm water bath until they're ready to be filled. So Dad, there you go, nice warm jar for you. Okay, thanks. We're gonna start filling them and put the meat and the seasoning in here. Now there's, you'll have to know when I do this, I don't do every piece of meat in the seasoning that I do. Mm -hmm. I figure it's you guys' dependence on how much salt flavor you want in it. I go one per five, every fifth piece. You can cut it back to one six if you think it's too salty, one seven, whatever. I, but the way I do it is I take the first piece, roll it in the meat and in the, in the seasoning, throw it in the jar. Grab some onions, throw them in the bottom of the jar. Put the Worcester sauce in it, and it's got to be usually this kind. Just throw yeah. a little junk in there. He likes the Lee and Perrins, so make sure to get that kind. when you kind. get it down in the jar, you got to make sure you pack it so there's no air pockets anywhere around. All right, so one seasoned piece to five unseasoned, yep. enough onions to fill the bottom of the jar, and about, I would say, a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce is how much you put in there. That's only on the first layer. Okay, so we got layer one done. So now we're back to the one season to five. So onions every time. Yep. Okay. And then do you do the Worcester again too or no? Yep. Just okay. Continue the same thing all the way up. Try to get as much meat packed down tight as you can into the jar. It's easier to do it as you come up instead of trying to. So that's the And then the you look spoon. at the jar, see? Okay. And you try to get all those air pockets out as much as you can as you're coming up. Mm -hmm. And once you got her packed down, and you hit her another shot. Okay, just a little drop of that. Yeah, he gets a little carried away with the Worcesters. He'll go through way more than most, I think, with that. <laughs> and how high up do you stack it in this? I usually leave this down an inch from the top, because mm -hmm. then I'm going to put a half inch of beef tallow on top of it when I do it, once I get them all in there. Okay, so every layer has one seasoned piece, four unseasoned, a little sprinkle of onions, and a splash of Worcestershire. Well, now that we got the beef towel rendered hot, that's what's going to seal my jars before I put them in a pressure cooker. So I like to put about an inch, I like to have a half inch to three quarters of an inch headspace in each jar when you put them in the pressure cooker. So it's really hot, so just be careful, and I try not to, that's why I keep the jars warm, so they can kind of absorb some of the heat. It's going to sizzle a little bit. I put a little bit on top of each one, let it set down. There, now we're going to seal the jars right away. I like to wipe the tops of each jar off. Good, with my drag. And I put the seal to it. As tight as I get them and they set them in the jar. And as fast as I can do it, which I'm getting slower as I get older. Your meat, once it's in the pressure cooker and comes out, when you actually take it to eat it, it's ready, it's cooked. So your meat is fully cooked through. All you have to do is when you're actually going to heat it up um, is take it out of the jar, put it on the stove on medium heat, and as soon as it's warm enough to eat, then go ahead and eat it. So it'll be fully cooked after this 90 minutes. And now we're ready to seal up the pressure cooker. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Venom Outdoors and Mountain Dew. We're going to put this recipe also on the Outdoor Bound TV website. And this was fun. Thanks, ma'am, for sharing the recipe. I don't know how to do it. I'm done teaching. Okay, fair enough. Well, join us right here next week for more hunting and fishing action from around the U.S., around Canada, and around the world right here on Outdoor Bound TV.
Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Suffix and VMC Hooks. Every hour we'll take a photo of what food I'm on to next. It sealed pretty good, didn't it, one? Oh, my top comes before I run out of snacks. It's all right, I do tell you. Take a hundred most of the time. This what happens when you eat canned beef. No, no, one shot wonder right here, all right? <laughs> this is the real Gary Hayes. Sometimes they had them blow up. Uh, venison, seven mile quick venison. <laughs> Right here on, I don't know, I screwed it up! I don't know what I was supposed to say! Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Yakima Bait and Tooth Tamer Rods.